Hey everybody, welcome back to Tim Travels. It's Terry, your host. So <clears throat> I'm coming to you from the uh, the manor. Uh, I wanted to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. I was gonna do um, I was gonna do a video yesterday, and then I was like, eh. and and I gotta say, my wife was sick, and I thought she had bronchitis. I even went and got her a COVID test, and she was under the weather. She's like, let's push. Christmas back a day. So this is kind of our Christmas Eve. I just finished watching the Ravens kind of beat the stuffing out of the uh, 49ers. I didn't, <clears throat> I don't watch a lot of football at home, but, but um, I was watching the scores and um, man, the Chiefs, uh, they dropped an important game, but it's very interesting what's going on. So, um, I was kind of rooting for Cowboys yesterday to beat the Dolphins because that helps the Bills, but, you know, I'll take what I can get. So, <clears throat> I said in the title, this was the uh, this <laughs> slightly boozy Christmas extravaganza. And uh, so I'm like, uh, you know, s flattery is the sincerest form of, of a compliment. And um, when my friend Lyle always does videos from home or like he does his live shows when he's home he always features some some bottle of uh of uh spirits that his son picked up for him my son didn't pick me up anything but my wife did and uh I had a I like bourbon and uh I she got this bottle I by the way I've I just used the last of it in this this cocktail that I'm drinking here but this is um some Elijah Craig small batch 1789 this stuff is really smooth it's only 94 proof um i like i like it i think it's cool because it's got a little cork it makes that sound um but yeah i've just been uh, drinking a little bit of this with some ginger ale um i got some friends coming over uh later in the week and we'll play we'll play games and stuff and um and uh, I'll probably make some, probably make some old fashions and get, um, get some, get some different bourbons to try. I believe it or not, I went down the street. There's a liquor store I can walk to, which is really convenient. And uh, I went down there and and I was looking for some Buffalo Trace, and they had a lot of bourbons and stuff. And I was like, Hey, you guys got any Buffalo Trace? And they're like, Oh, it's really hard to get. And I'm like, Man, I go through Kentucky all the time. And I and and Bourbon uh, Buffalo Trace is in uh, their uh, dis main distilleries in uh, Frankfurt, <clears throat> and the guy told me because apparently there's like this Bourbon Club in in this in my town or in the north part of our county, and uh, he's like, man, if you if you had a case of that, he goes. Uh, you could make some money on that. So I don't know. I might, I might just invest in, uh, the next time I'm in Kentucky or I got some friends that live there, just be like, Hey, give me a couple of cases of that stuff and I'll just sell the bottles at a profit. Um, cause apparently it's hard to get here in Maryland. So he says sometimes they have an allocation of it to get a couple of bottles. Um, but I do like this Elijah Craig. If you like bourbon, um, this is some really, really nice stuff I've had. This is, like I said, the small batch. I had a bottle last year that was, um, was just, I guess the regular. It was really good. Very smooth. Um, I like Maker's Mark. I like, I, you know, and, 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 um, I even like, you know, like Jim Beam or Evan Williams, but, um, but I did want a bottle of that Buffalo Trace. So I might have to, um, buy someone. I'm in Kentucky or get some shipped here. So anyway, today's Christmas Day. Merry Christmas to everybody. Um, little history, Christmas Day history. 1914, the uh, Christmas Day truce between British and German soldiers during World War I. And there's been a lot, a lot of talk about this over the years. Movies, plays, musicals, there's been books written about it. Um, but it's important to know that, you know, just these average dog faces, these average soldiers, just, you know, it's it kind of started by um, P. 
people just trying to improve their own living conditions. And so, you know, they would get above the trench line and, and the other soldiers wouldn't fire on them. And they're like, hey, they're not doing anything that's going to hurt us. And we'll just let them do their thing and we'll do our thing. And then people started putting up candles and singing songs. And the, and the Christmas carol singing had been going on since like mid mid-December. And eventually there was this like, a little more formalized truce where guys got together and they exchanged, you know, cigarettes and, and maybe a little, little shot of snops or, um, you know, whatever the British soldiers had, a little whiskey, a little scotch. And, um, yeah, they just, you know, it was the brotherhood of man, if you will. And, um, the German high command was so outraged that they um, issued an order the following year in 1915 that said that anybody that participated in a, in a uh, truce would be shot for treason. And in the British high command um, issued an order saying that anybody that participated would be court-martialed. Um, there is some kind of like urban myth or misinformation that there was like some soccer matches, some football, as they would say, um, that went on. That's probably, that's never been verified. It's probably not true. It's probably wishful thinking. Um, but about 30,000 troops participated in this. And so, um, it's still significant. It's, it's just, um, it's significant in the spirit of Christmas. And uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, just Christmas in general. You know, it's uh, 2023 was probably probably the hardest year I've had ever. Um, not financially, um, you know, not not because of money, although that was a part of it. But just, um, it was just a tough, tough year. A lot of stuff going on in my family. Um, I feel like, you know, every one of my kids had something that was vexatious that they had to deal with, whether it was health problems or work problems or something else. And uh, it was just this really, really memorable for all the wrong reasons here. So, um, you know, I just want to hoist a glass and, and welcome 2024. I won't be back on the road until after, after, uh, the beginning of the year. I know a lot of friends are still out on the road. Um, if you haven't checked out Lyle's channel at no hippie trucking and transportation, he's out, um, in Nebraska where they've had, you know, like blizzard conditions and stuff. And, and he was saying, <laughs> and I've seen a few videos. I've saw, I saw a lot of Amazon trailers in the ditch. Um, saw a super ego and this is just on YouTube. So you take a look at that, but it's like when it, when I, you know, if I was out, uh, the second I see one truck in the ditch, I'm looking for, I'm looking for the off ramp, right? I'm looking, I want to punch out of that situation because if, if one trailer's going in the ditch, uh, you know, one truck's going in the ditch, it's not too much of a stretch to imagine, you know, my vehicle going in the ditch. And, uh, yeah, I don't want to be a hero. So if you're out there, you know, like I always say, if if this if what was in your trailer was that important, they'd have put it on an airplane. And you know, I don't care what you know what the what the deadline was. I don't care what a dispatcher said. If you end up in a ditch or in the median, and you know, it's going to be your fault and only your fault. So I just share that with you. And this that applies everywhere. That applies everywhere. So, um, yeah, it was a tough year. I know a lot of people had hard years economically. And um, 
You know, it's kind of funny. I was mentioning Christmas a few weeks ago and somebody commented and they said, oh, I hate the commercialism of Christmas. Now, and mind you, I, I recognize that I'm telling you this kind of after the fact, but I want to plant a seed. I want to plant a seed. And, you know, it, it, I don't know exactly when we started kind of having this epiphany, but I, I, I realized, and I was in Target the other day, and we were just buying a few things, and there was a huge line, and that was, that was cool, you know, everybody was very nice. And by the way, Target does a great job of managing, like, the lines, as opposed to Walmart. Walmart's more like a free-for-all, Target's more like there's concierge service. But um, I heard somebody, I uh, overheard somebody saying, oh, well, I got this and I got that, but I feel like I need to get this one more thing for this person or whatever. And I was like, you know, I don't feel like that. And in fact, my wife and I said to each other, there's nothing we need. Like, it, 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 and when I say that, I'm totally serious. Like, there's nothing we need. And I know Christmas isn't necessarily about getting somebody a gift that they need anyway. But one of the things that we've done, and I and I share this with you because I think it's I think it's um first of all, I think it's a great idea. But second of all, I think it's um I think you'll find once you kind of institute it and and like people that are around you, whether it's family, close friends, they start to like see what, what it's all about. It, it really is a great idea. And what we started doing is instead of worrying about like wrapping something up and having some gift, having some thing to give to somebody, what we would do is we would give time and experiences. And, you know, it, it really does make a lot of sense because I can't tell you what I got most of the time when I was a kid at Christmas, but I can distinctly recall the times that my dad would play like catch with me, like with a baseball or a football. And I can remember events where people were together, and we were, we, were, we were doing things together. And so what we've done is, like, over the, over the past several years, we have given experiences and time. Because, you know, like I said, you, you know, I can't recall a lot of gifts, but I can recall spending time with people. And that's really important. Now, there are some gifts, and I'm going to point to this football helmet right here. That is a miniature, yeah, my head was never that small. It's a miniature Navy football helmet that's autographed by Roger Staubach. And I point that out because it's, I got a text from a friend today and he said, Merry Christmas. And I said, hey, Merry Christmas to you. And then I took a picture of that helmet. Why? Because in 2004, he gave me that helmet as a Christmas gift and a lot has happened since 2004 to both of us, but he was my boss and I, you know, and look, I'll be, <laughs> I'll be totally honest with you. He also gave me a bonus check for $50,000 that Christmas. Um, and my wife was really pleased with that. We, we had a car, we paid, <laughs> we paid it off, but $50,000 is long gone, but I still got this helmet and it's still, every time I see it, it reminds me of my friend. And while, and it survived a few moves and stuff over the years, but, but the important thing is that, um, you know, I remember the experience. I can distinctly remember him walking into my office with a big grin on his face, giving me that helmet, like, and the check, the check of my bonus, my $50,000 bonus was just a, um, you know, it was kind of like an afterthought because this was at a hedge fund and money was not scarce. And um, yeah, so it was like the helmet was more because he put a lot of thought into it, right? And um, 
And by the way, Prime paid um, Christmas bonuses this past week, $110, which is, by the way, a $40 increase from last year. Now, I said last year I appreciated it, and I appreciate it again this year. And, um, you know, and, and I'll point out, they don't have to do it. And, you know, they're giving bonuses to all the contractors. So, you know, you do the math, right? That's that's a fair amount of money, $110 per contractor. And, you know, what are we talking like? You know, I don't know. A few million bucks, I think. Don't ask me to do math. I, I've uh, had a couple of adult beverages. But, but... The, it's the thought that counts sometimes, it, and it really does. Um, you know, this year has been a little bit tough, and so they increased the bonus almost by 50%, actually over 50% increase to the bonus. So, you know, it's, it's, it's appreciated. So, but getting back to the commercialism and stuff of, of, um, of Christmas, you know, if, if that's if that's a burden to you and, and you just don't feel like keeping up with it and you don't want to be the thinking, oh, oh, what, um, what, uh, what more can I get or, or worrying about that, you know, give the gift of time, right? It, because it, that's something that is, is invaluable, right? It can't be replaced. And, you know, it's, it really is meaningful doing things together and it could be, you know, like just some movie tickets or, you know, you buy a couple of tickets and you say, Hey, I'm going to take you to the movies or, uh, you know, my wife used to do stuff with my daughters like, Hey, I'm going to do, we're going to do a Manny Petty or like last year, um, my daughter, Brittany, who, you know, was on the truck with me over the summer. She's a, like a theater kid. And I was like, hey, we're going to go to New York City and we're going to see a, th a show on Broadway. So we went up there on the train, made it a day, went to this great show, which was um, turned out to be a show that won a bunch of Tony Awards. So she was like super excited about that. And then, you know, she was one of the first kids that saw that particular play. And that's a, that's an experience that can't be replicated you know I mean I guess it could be replicated but but it's 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 not something she's going to forget anytime soon so I just share that with you if, if the commercialism bugs you and and here's the thing uh, you know I saw, I saw some signs the other day like Jesus is the reason for the season and and stuff that says like happy birthday Jesus and you know that bugs the crap out of me because I'm like, happy birthday, Jesus. Like, they put these signs out front. Like, Jesus is like a four-year-old that they're going to have a party for. And first of all, it's not his birthday. And second of all, you know, this whole thing, like, there are so many pagan traditions associated with Christmas. And Christians just wanted to, they just wanted to usurp the holidays from, like, the pagans, the Celts. And that's why a lot of holidays exist. And holidays are all a construct anyway. Like, like it, it, like in the Bible, right? Like, they talk, they do talk about Passover. But again, even Passover, even though it's like biblical, it's still just a construct of man, you know. And um, so, anyway, I, <laughs> I, I get why people just get burnt out on the holiday and stuff. Um, so let's talk about trucking for a little bit. Um, you know, I've heard some, I, I heard some videos lately and people are talking about, um, you know, training and I pro I'm probably going to pick up a PSD student here in the next couple of weeks. I don't know if I'm going to do it out of Pittston or if I'm going to go out to, um, if I'm going to go out to Springfield, if I go out to Springfield, it's probably not going to be till around the 10th of January. Um, if it's in Pittston, it might be as early as the 5th. I don't know when they're having people come in for orientation, but I, you know, so I'm kind of getting back in that training mindset. Sorry, I'm trying to see how, how, how long I've been talking. Um,
delicious. Um, but I've, I've heard a couple of things and I, and I, and, you know, recently, and I wanted to, I wanted to just give a couple of thoughts. Okay. So first thing I was, um, I heard about a guy that was talking to his trainer and this is in TNT, by the way. So I'm talking PSD, um, that I'm going to do at least in January, but, um, <laughs> about a TNT student talking to his trainer about how, hey, you know, I think this, I, I think I drive a lot more than the trainer. And I'm like, you know, first of all, if anybody ever said that to me, I would, I would be like, oh, oh, I can fix that. And I would drive the rest of the time until they got back to the terminal and I put them off my truck. Now, I will say this, that I routinely drive more than my trainees. Um, simply because I really enjoy driving and I don't really like riding in the passenger seat that much. Um, and maybe a part of it's that I'm a control freak. Part of it is I just like to drive and it's my truck. So I drive. Um, but if, if somebody was like in a training environment and they were worried that there wasn't some equity between, you know, drive shifts be like you're in the wrong business man because the trainer at prime is paying your full salary plus taxes and all that other stuff and you know what job do you get to go to your boss and say hey um i know she don't work as hard as i do like that's not a thing okay and the other thing that came up recently with a friend of mine um, not with him personally, but he was telling me about another driver is, is they made a decision to go down a road. And by the way, Lyle was talking about this, um, recently, how he went down the state highway in Pennsylvania and he regretted it because it took him a long time. So, so here's the thing. I like to get off the beaten path, but the other thing that I learned a long time ago, and I'm sharing this because I feel like people don't feel like they're empowered to recover from a mistake. But I'm, I'm saying this because it's it that we are now legit in the winter time. And we're all trying to save a little bit of money and maybe get something done a little bit sooner than than we otherwise would. But here's the deal. You know, there's a saying that when you when you find yourself digging a hole, you know, you dug yourself into a hole. Don't keep digging. Like you're not gonna dig your way out of a hole. I mean, theoretically you could dig yourself a ramp, but let's be honest, making a bad decision is human nature. Continuing to make bad decisions, well, that's just a person who hasn't learned. And I, I, I've seen this before. In fact, I saw a picture recently. Actually, let me show you these pictures. I'm going to show you these pictures. Okay, so that's a guy that was in Pennsylvania. And, and maybe I'm a little bit of a homer when it comes to like covered bridges in Pennsylvania because in, in Pennsylvania and Maryland and in other states, Ohio, Iowa, you know, people actually use these bridges. They're not just there to be cute or to, to attract tourists. Like people actually drive over these bridges. Those bridges have been there in some cases hundreds of years. But here's the thing. They've always been there. And they're, they're tight and they have a roof on them and they're made out of wood, okay? There is no semi that can go over a covered bridge and under any circumstances ever. And here's the deal. When you do something stupid like this, you not only um, damage your truck, you damage the bridge, but what you end up doing is making it super, super inconvenient for all the people that live around there. And it makes them hate truckers. And here's the thing. When I was on the, uh, when I, I was a volunteer firefighter here in Maryland, 
And we have a list in our radio room of bridges we can't drive over, construction sites or just bridges that can't handle the equipment. And even when somebody's house is on fire, we don't drive over those bridges. Well, I guarantee this guy in the pictures, there, he wasn't responding to a fire, okay? He just got lost. But here's the thing. Do not make a bad choice or a bad decision worse by doing something stupid like this. If you're on a road in the middle of the night and you're like, man, this road is really tight, really narrow. Don't keep driving down it unless you know the road, unless you've scoped it all out and you're familiar with the area because it's not probably going to get better. Okay. It's not going to get better. Just stop what you're doing and try to figure out what's the best way to extricate myself from this. And it may be backing down the road. And I know that sounds crazy, but here's the thing. This guy that got stuck in this bridge, if he had just backed down the road, call the police, ask for some help, put your four ways on and look in your mirrors and be like, okay, I can, I can see to back down this road because it was daylight. And just take it one step at a time. I had a situation recently where this, and this is here in Maryland, not too far from my house. In fact, in the same county I live in. And this guy's like, oh, go park on this road, right? And it's a terrible, it's a terrible 90. They're like, go park on this road. So I go down the road and I go to turn around. Well, then there's a restricted bridge. So I was like, all right, well, I'm not going to try to keep going. I stopped where I was waited for the intersection to clear, put my four ways on. I back across the intersection and then go back down the road I came on, right? I didn't compound the mistake. I waited till it was safe to back up, you know, 50, 80 feet so I could turn my tractor and go back down the road. Don't be the person who compounds a mistake. You turn onto a road and it says there's a 10 foot, eight, eight inch bridge. You're not going to make it under it. It's not a mistake. You can't. So you need, immediately need to stop and just say, just assess, right? Ask a dispatcher for help. Get on your nav while you're parked. Call the police. A lot of times police are very willing to help. I'm not a huge fan of calling the cops for most things. But a lot of times if you're like, hey, look, I, I, I made this turn because this is what my GPS said but I realize I'm not gonna be able to clear this bridge. Are you guys able to help me extricate myself from this? And they're, most of the time, they're gonna help you. It might take them a few minutes to come out there because it's not an emergency. But if you, if you go get stuck under that rail crossing or you know the rail bridge, or you get hung up on a rail, you know, high centered on a rail crossing or you run underneath a covered bridge they're going to ticket the crap out of you and you may end up losing your vehicle over it like destroying your vehicle so i just share that with you because it's been on my mind i don't know why it happens <laughs> but if you're in a bad situation don't keep digging just say, okay, what do I need to do to get out of this safely without tearing up my trailer, without tearing up somebody's property, without, you know, damaging something, losing my load, whatever it is, right? Um, and even if the cops are jerks to you, okay, fine. You learned a lesson. They were jerks to you and you got out of the situation without having to talk to the safety department. So, Again, if you find yourself in that situation, just just take that approach. Um, you know, it's it's really easy to make. I, I, look, I've made wrong turns all the time over the years. I probably four or five times a year, I make a turn and I'm like, eh, I shouldn't have turned here. But the key is not exacerbating the situation. So anyway, Merry Christmas to everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the Slightly Boozy Tim Travels Extravaganza on Christmas. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed their holiday. 
the New Year's coming up. Keep an eye on the weather. And uh, I'll see you back out on the road shortly after the New Year. Talk to you later. Bye.